Hey, welcome back. So we've been talking about our forces unit in physics and AP physics classes. And right now I need to talk about a crucial strategy for being able to solve ramp problems. And that is how do you deal with the angle of a ramp that is given to you? So maybe your problem says something like a ramp at 15 degrees above the horizontal or a hill at 20 degrees above the horizontal. And then the problem continues. And the question is, well, what do we do with that angle? I've drawn that angle in over here with reference to a horizontal line over here. Notice I have drawn my force due to gravity going straight down. We always do that. Gravity just pulls straight down. Doesn't care if something's on a ramp. I have thrown in a normal force as well. So I'm going to set about proving to you why two angles are going to be equal to each other using some geometry. So let's get to it. So first of all, I do want to remind you that the sum of any three angles for a right triangle is going to be 180 degrees. And one of those angles is going to be 90 degrees, right? So we already know this is 90 degrees. This angle here is going to be a complement to this angle over here. That means their sum of these two angles will equal 90 degrees. They must because the total for all three angles is going to be 180 degrees for a right triangle. So I could ask you if this is 30 degrees, just to make very simple numbers, if this is 30 degrees, what is this angle going to be? And hopefully you can come up with the idea that that is going to be 60 degrees over here. All right. So I've drawn this angle in purple, this angle in green. This is where it's going to get visually a little complex, but I've taken the time to show you this sequentially. So just hang in there because it's going to get a little messy, but I'm going to draw another triangle. This red triangle is on top of what we've seen before. And to kind of zoom in on what's going on, I'm going to draw this over here. One thing I want you to notice immediately is that this angle right here for the blue triangle is exactly the same as the angle for the red triangle and that's because for this angle in particular they are on top of each other so they are exactly the same well if we know what that value is we know what the green angle is for the blue triangle we actually know what that angle is for the red triangle as well so if we say this is 60 degrees this is 90 degrees that actually will tell us something about this angle up here in the red triangle. So what do you think is true about this angle up here in the red triangle? It turns out that that angle is going to be the complement to this angle. So like if this was 60 degrees, let's say, what would this angle be up here? Well, we know that would be 30 degrees up here. So we have proven that this angle here, this purple angle, is equal to this purple angle over here. So that is the given usually you get in your problem, where it'll say a hill is at whatever, 20 degrees above the horizontal or something like that. What do we do with that? Well, we take that and we say, well, that is going to be this angle right here is going to be the exact same angle. Okay, well, that's helpful, but still we need to do something with that, right? Like, all right, what does that do for me? Well, let me show you what that does for you. What I'm going to do is redraw this and show you that I don't need all of the other stuff that I just showed you. If I understand that this angle here is equivalent to this angle over here, and I can kind of explain it or maybe even draw it if I had to, then I can build on that. And my next step is going to be to take this vector and to break it into components. And the reason why we're going to break a force due to gravity, which is just going straight down into components, is because for ramp problems, we have a tilted axis. We always tilt the axis in the direction of motion up the ramp or down the ramp. And so we do have a tilted axis in a ramp problem. Our force due to gravity is actually no longer in completely the y-axis. So we have to break it into components. So we take this vector and make it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And we can use sine and cosine to be able to solve for fgx and fgy. And that is what we're going to do with this information. So this angle tells us, well, we know what this angle is. And I can take that vector and make it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle, break it down into its components with sine and cosine. And then I'm ready to continue with the problem. All right, one last thing before we end this quick screencast. I do want to point out this is a common mistake I see when students are first learning how to do this. Why is this wrong? All right, and so hopefully you can spot the error here. This is wrong because this student is just thinking that the FGX is going to be completely horizontal. And that's not the case because remember our x-axis is now slanted to match the motion that is going to be happening along this ramp. So we could say that's going to be wrong. If you do the problem that way, you'll get it incorrect. This is going to be our correct drawing over here. 
And the reason is this fgx is actually parallel to the x-axis as it should be. So we can solve for this component and we can add up the components in the x-axis and get the problem correct. So hopefully this has been helpful. We're going to continue. I'm going to do another screencast dealing with legit numbers. But I wanted to do this as a preliminary lesson so you would understand when I quickly show that this angle is equal to this angle, you understand why I'm making that claim. And you're prepared to already understand that I'm probably going to do this in my next step as well as you should whenever you do ramp problems in physics. So hopefully this has been helpful. So let me know if you have any comments down below, and I hope you stick around for the next lesson. Have a great day.